I'd like to give a short history on the origin of the 24 code, which is derived from nature's exquisite numbers called the Fibonacci sequence. So what happened, there was a sequence of numbers called 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. We all know the Fibonacci sequence. And when it's translated into a simpler sequence by taking away the number 9, we ended up with a 24 code. So I've spent my whole last four decades of my life researching the 24 code, and I've actually written nine books on it. But lo and behold, thinking that I had discovered it, I realized that it existed as, as a few pages in another book called The Language of Pattern. So this was written in 1973, about five decades ago. So this was when I was still a child. So uh, Keith Alban, the artist or the author, was a student of Keith Critchlow. Keith Critch Critchlow is a famous architect aligned with um, Prince Charles in Britain. And I actually met uh, this amazing architect at Sydney University. And so somehow I, knew, I got access to this book. So inside this book here, you can see that up on the top here, we've got the one, one, two, three, five, eight, four, three, seven. That's the 24 code repeating and it repeats forever. And what they did was they uh, cleverly analyzed and isolated certain parts of it to, to extrude pattern from the 24 code. So I just wanted to acknowledge that because Part of this research is also acknowledging the people before us. And as uh, every week I get another person writing to me saying, oh, it was my discovery. I discovered the 24 code. And when you ask them to show them the papers that they've written on it, they can't show anything. So it, it's out there in the mass consciousness. And I believe that it came to many, many people independently. So just acknowledging that um, I'm fascinated by this research and I want to show you a little bit more how we can turn number into art into a toroidal field so let's um let's look at the fibonacci sequence so there's one one two three two and three make five three and five make eight five and eight now five and eight add up to 13 there's 13 but really when we Take away the number nine from this, we get four. But the shortcut is called digital roots or digital compression. Just add the digits. One and three is four. So the next number, eight and 13, is 21. But 21 becomes three. Now, we just add these single digits. Four and three is seven. Because 13 and 21 make 34 over here. But 34, take if you keep taking away nine, as a so seven. So just add the digits. Three and seven is one. Seven, because three and seven is ten, which is a one. Seven and one is eight. So you can see that I'm writing the twenty-four code. That in these twenty-four codes, these numbers repeat forever. And if you added up all the digits, it's that it adds up to one hundred and eight. So this is the. Um, so I was the first one to really talk about. The, the connection to the Fibonacci numbers that it adds up to Sri 108. So this is about the mathematics of flowers. It's in the human body. It's in the planetary distances. So 108 is a very sacred number. And we're going to show you another aspect of it. So, so to turn the numbers into art, I need to create a grid called 9 times 24. So, so this distance along here is... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there, there's obviously 24 horizontal rows because we've got 24 numbers in the code. So nine times the 24, well, nine, to, um, nine times 12, if you go halfway, nine times 12 is 108. So double 108 is 216. So this is a 216 grid, which has a lot to do with the radius of the moon, 21,600 miles. The reason why there's an interesting thing at the halfway point is that every every um, opposite pair adds up to 9. So 1 and 8 is 9, 1 and 8 is 9, 2 and 7 is 9, 3 and 6 is 9, 4 and 5 is 9. All the opposite pairs on this wheel of 24 add up to 9. So it's a, it's a highly tuned instrument of the highest order. And 24 was used by many people like 
um, Gan, who was the richest man ever in the history of the stock market. And he used the Wheel of 24 uh, aligned with astrology and magic squares of nine to predict the rise and fall of the economy because it's the mathematics of nature. Okay, so what I've already done to, to show you what I've done, I've taken a blue chalk and I said, well, here's a nine, we'll tick the nine. So this is nine, I've shaded in the nine. And this one is one there. That eight is this distance here. And this is two, six, five, one, four, six, seven, eight, eight, nine, eight, one, seven. So I'm going to just show you what I've created uh, to finish off the last bit, just to show you what I've done. I'm going to take the next number three. And you can see that any odd number, because that, that's my center square here. So any odd number fits right in the middle like that, right? But when you get an even number like four, if I'm going to do four, so there's my three, but I've got to go half a square here and half a square here. Do you understand that? Because I've got three whole squares and then I've got to go two half squares and make the four. So, this, so four is this distance here on the bar of nine. So then I just shade that in. So eight is um, an even number. So eight would be, um, this is an eight, there's two eights here. So you can see that I have to go halfway along the ninth row. So I've got to join that. Yeah, I've been doing things like this all my life. I don't know why, I just love looking for symmetry looking for pattern. Five is an odd number, so that's easy. So there's the center, and two on either side of that. So two there, there, and I shade that in. And three's odd, so that's easy. That's just drawing those three. Two is more difficult because it's an even number. So let's draw the one, there's the one. Now to get, to make it two, I have to add two halves. So I just go to here and there, shade it in. And we've got a one and a one, that's it, really easy there. So I might as well just draw both of them at the same time and shade that in. Okay, have a look at that. So that's the completed translation of the 24 infinitely repeating code into a grid a 216 grid where we've turned the numbers into pictures so this is a true representation of the 24 code the numerical the geometric and what i liked about this particular one is that when um when when we started to look at it when you look at these numbers here when you look at the first numbers up to eight, one, one, two, three, five, eight, I'm just gonna put this in. Can you see that it defines a beautiful kind of structure? And if you were to squint at that and look at that again, it kind of looks like a Tibetan stupa. So what that means is that when we apply the Fibonacci sequence to our architecture, our bio designs, it means it's an aesthetically pleasing to the eye because that's what all this Fibonacci sequence is about. It's about the mathematics of beauty. It's a, because we are this ratio. When we see a Tibetan stupa, we, we're kind of jaw dropped or amazed because it's a reflection of our own internal harmonies and symmetry. That's why we love this sacred architecture. Or it looks like a Japanese pagoda as well. So I just wanted you to appreciate that and i believe too i also have a theory that these numerical codes when they're made as patterns every pattern has a is a frequency because a shape stores memory shape actually has a vibration and every vibration emits certain hertz or cycles per second so i actually can see this in a sense like a tesla coil because it's emitting a certain frequency and the and each strata of the frequency is in a um, coherent relationship to the next one so each one of these numbers represents non-destructive compression these are the ultimate wavelengths that nest perfectly they embed 
there's self there's a self similarity self organized so this is a highly organized structure so i like to relate it to a tesla coil even though a tesla coil is more like a donut like a torus we know that but in a way we we could take the top to the bottom and in a way create it as a coil um, which means if i took um if, if this is a strip of paper and there's that 24 code i can join the top to the bottom in a sense and make it like a donut or a ring that's what torus torus means yeah but so just to show you um what i've done is that i originally drew this um in 2011 as a sketch so you can see this is my style i work on graph paper i called it the antennial columna phi code one and there's three phi codes so this is just one of other possible coils um, so it's an infinitely looping phi code fountain. So let's, let's have a look at the expression of the fountain. But before I do that, one more picture. So a colleague of mine called Rich Jarvis, he's um, very adept with computer graphics. So he took the same information, as you can see. But can you see what he's done? He's taken, there's the 24 code up to here. That's the 9. There's the 9. And he, it starts again underneath. So this diagram has two 24 codes compared to this is the one code and this one here is the, the 24 code. So I just wanted to show you that my job here is to inspire. My job is many other people imitate us. We're here to inspire. So just to conclude the knowledge, I'd like to show you how I feel that, that this, this energy of the stupa is a fountain. It's going forever ever and up and as it goes into the infinity what we call the macrocosm it loops back into itself and it comes into the base here so this is a field that's infinitely um, connecting from the above to the below because there is no separation if this is the mathematics of nature we have to understand that this energy keeps coming around and it loops forever back into itself. So I just want to show you that energy is forever going up the column here and it's going around and as it goes up the column it's going around and it's looping. So this is a, a field where right? we're essentially creating a toroidal field and this is the field that is around us. So we have the same field. When we were born we had this fontanelle here there was a hole and means we were connected to cosmos so there's energy when a newborn a newborn child is still connected to the celestial but this, but they're being born into the earth so the energy comes down through their feet and up their body so we form um this toroidal field and i believe that this is the mathematics that is the most appropriate to our bio resonance so i hope you appreciated this um it's it's in a way what we're doing is we're we're saying that Mathematics is a sacred thing. Mathematics is an important part of our evolving technology. As we forever evolve, we have to make sure that this technology goes into the hands of students, the next generation, the millennials, who are going to understand that everything we think we create. So, they, so what's important is not the device, not the machine. The most important thing is, is the consciousness of the inventor. Thank you.